Regarded as the foremost military treatise, Sun Tzu's The Art of War consists of only 13 chapters, totaling 6,000 characters. In the first chapter of The Art of War, Sun Tzu presents a resounding motto, all warfare is based on deception. While this statement encapsulates his profound military wisdom, it has sparked criticism from many later generations who find it lacking in benevolence and righteousness. So, how should we interpret the phrase, all warfare is based on deception? What historical significance does it carry? And how does Sun Tzu succinctly summarize this viewpoint? In this episode, I will delve into Sun Tzu's brilliant summation of his teachings. Sun Tzu stated, thus the highest form of generalship is to balk the enemy's plans. Here, balk the enemy's plans refers to strategizing, which is the superior approach to achieving victory. Therefore, we must continually adapt our strategies to meet the demands of battle in order to overcome our adversaries. Only by doing so can we realize the ultimate objective of Sun Tzu's famous saying, all warfare is based on deception. The concluding line, attack him where he is unprepared, appear where you are not expected. These military devices, leading to victory, must not be divulged beforehand. This sentence encapsulates the essence of the entire passage, containing two layers of meaning, unprepared and unexpected. Unprepared refers to instances where the enemy lacks preparedness, either in terms of defenses or due to psychological complacency. Unexpected, on the other hand, signifies situations the enemy cannot anticipate. The ultimate goal of all warfare is based on deception, is to create the scenario described in this sentence at the critical moment. Through various tactics, we can catch the enemy off guard, reducing their combat effectiveness to a minimum. Then, through our strategic maneuvers, we make them face the unexpected, leading to failure occurring at locations and times they never imagined. This is the key to winning through intelligence. Let's take an example from ancient China, during the Three Kingdoms period, to illustrate this point. Deng Ai was leading an attack on Chengdu, and his subordinates suggested a retreat because the enemy had taken control of a narrow pass, making further advance seemingly impossible. I've explained different terrain features in previous videos, so I won't go into detail here. However, Deng Ai remained unfazed by this challenge. Quietly, he led his soldiers into the mountains, executed a daring deep flanking maneuver, and penetrated deep into the enemy's rear. When the enemy learned of this situation, they were at a loss because they had overly fortified their positions, leaving their rear vulnerable. In the end, they had no choice but to surrender. This example exemplifies a classic strategy of catching the enemy off guard, and we can clearly see the crucial concept of change embedded within it. As we've come to understand, deception underscores the significance of change. Hence, in warfare, individual agency becomes exceptionally crucial, simply put, it's the adaptability on the actual battlefield. Much like a soccer match, where a coach is responsible for devising a game plan, once the match begins, even the most flawless plan cannot account for the ever-changing realities. It's at this point that the team's synergy and adaptability come into play. They continuously adjust their tactical strategies with the ultimate goal of scoring and winning the game. Similarly, in warfare, the commander is responsible for issuing orders prior to the battle. However, on the battlefield, the situation changes in the blink of an eye, making the adaptability of the soldiers of paramount importance. Through their judgment and constant tactical adjustments, the ultimate objective of the battle can be achieved. In China, there's an idiom called paper warfare, which describes those who can't perform effectively on the actual battlefield. This story takes place during the Warring States period and features Zhao Kui as the protagonist. In Records of the Grand Historian, he is described as follows, Zhao Kui was well-versed in the art of war, to the point where even his father, a renowned general, couldn't stump him, and he became quite arrogant. However, in the Battle of Chongping, he fell for a strategic trap, leading to the complete annihilation of his army of 400,000 soldiers, and his own demise. This serves as a typical example illustrating that having theoretical knowledge alone, without the ability to perform under real battlefield conditions, is insufficient. Therefore, the realm of warfare places the utmost emphasis on timing. It emphasizes that once on the battlefield, soldiers must continuously adapt their tactics according to the changing battlefield environment. 
failing to adjust plans promptly when circumstances change, and persisting with the original plan or constantly contemplating how to modify it, will ultimately result in failure because the enemy won't wait for you. Thus, the most crucial aspect of warfare is timing, highlighting the importance of the ability to perform effectively on the spot. Such capability cannot be solely acquired through textbook learning, it must be honed through continuous practice. Sun Tzu's famous quote extends seamlessly from all warfare is based on deception, to these military devices, leading to victory, must not be divulged beforehand. This continuity underscores a pivotal concept, change, which is brilliantly emphasized. Sun Tzu's deception not only guides the fundamental principles of warfare at the strategic level but also provides specific methods for employing this deception at the tactical level, totaling 12 strategies. So, what are these 12 methods? We'll delve deeper into them next time. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the section below. I look forward to hearing from you.